lecture number six. Um, this lecture is an extension of um, gives an extension for of the basic input output relationship. So the topic is production layer decomposition and structural path analysis. And uh, uh, I personally, I find it, I find this very interesting personally. Um, so there's a bit of mathematics at the beginning. Once again, we start uh, with the basic input output relationship. With this one, all right. All right, but this time um, we look at at this this matrix here, which is the Leontief inverse. Okay, the famous Leontief inverse. When you do these these calculations, um, you can see it involves a matrix inverse, and depending on how large your matrices are, um, this is not always easy. To calculate an inverse, of course you can for small uh, pack for small matrices you can use Excel, uh, but still depending on whether if you have some errors in here, you know um, you might find that, you know, that the inverse will will produce rubbish. But then, so you have to really uh, uh, take care here. But there's one way um, that provides not only an easier calculation for the inverse, but it, in, it entails also more insights, and that is um, to develop the inverse into a series. Let's do that here. Uh, for this uh, shape and for the properties that A has, meaning every element is smaller than 1, we can write L equals um, sum of uh, I equals 0 to infinity uh, A A to the power of I and this is nothing but I, which is a unity matrix plus A plus A squared plus A cubed plus dot dot dot. Okay? Here, you have to explain to people what that means, the square of a matrix. Go back to the second lecture and say, remember matrix multiplication? This square is nothing but A times A, where you do rows, a row times columns, and so on and so on. Okay? Once again, a reminder how that works. Okay? You might want to look at a numerical example for A and look at the elements in here and, and, and show that they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the higher. Yeah? But anyway, this is just a bit of math. Um, the nice bit what you can do with this is you can, uh, you can ask for an interpretation of this. What does this actually mean? And you can explain this in terms of production rounds. For example, uh, take this equation here. Let's do a generalized equation and write and substitute L in that equation for the for the series expansion. Okay, and that uh, looks uh, very nice. Let's say total emissions again. Okay, is epsilon times. Now let's insert this uh, expansion for the Leontief inverse, and it looks like this. Okay, now let's pull this apart and it looks like this. Epsilon Y plus Epsilon A Y plus Epsilon A squared Y plus ta -ta 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 Okay, now let's interpret these, these, um, these terms and that could be something for the seminar talk. Yeah, let's derive this. Not, not this one probably, but the interpretation of this could be nice. This is final demand. This is our example, our household, our airport, our God knows what. And this is an intensity. Right? So if there's a purchase of petrol in here, and that's the emissions intensity of petrol, right? this is simply then this is what you emit at the construction site of the airport by using petrol on site. Okay? This is on Side. This here, okay, this is why you purchase, uh, you purchase say, say, petrol. Then in here, there might be something in it that say, well, if you purchase petrol, then the refinery needs to do something else, buy um, feedstock or um, buy chemicals or buy something else. And then it's the emissions intensity of what the refinery actually bought. So you can see this is the first production round. Right? So this is the emissions for something that somebody buys to make the airport. This is the second production round. And so on and so on and so on and so on. 
And the nice thing is that this series converges. So, uh, cumulatively, here's your, your production round, or your production layer. That's why this is called production layer decomposition. There's a zero, one, two, and so on. And this is maybe your, uh, your cumulative emissions at this stage, and it goes up, uh, starts here on site. May, you, might, you may start, uh, depending on how you count, zero and one, you may start here. It goes up, 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 a bit less, 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 less. And usually this plateau, this plateau, you, uh, is sort of is achieved at production layer eight. Okay? So that, that was, comes out of a, of a production layer decomposition. There's a good example in the agriculture. Uh, the organic versus conventional food uh, uh, paper here, and where, where Richard plotted um, what's that? energy intensity for organic and conventional farms. And if you just do the on site, you can see that um, uh, organic and conventional look about the same. But as you go up the, um, the production layers here, you see that the picture changes and organic looks looks much better on the energy intensity. So in a, in a decision-making context, it would mean that if you make a decision or you come to a conclusion based on on-site uh, performance only, you would give different recommendations to a policymaker than if you use input-output analysis and do the whole supply chain calculations. There's also another paper that is called uh, Differential Conversions of Supply of um, of production layers or something like that in Journal of Industrial Ecology where we actually pick four examples where there's a crossover. You know? Take this diagram and have two alternative options, say a wind farm and a solar thermal plant or uh, a train ride or a bus ride or I think there's four, four alternative options and, uh, and they go like this. No, no, no better, sorry. So always option A and option B, and when you compare them, they have a crossover. Right? And sometimes the crossover comes really late. Sometimes they go like this. And you cross over at layer six or something. Right? So what that means is a decision maker um, hires a consulting firm and the consulting firm gives him information on what happens here, maybe a few suppliers. Sometimes, you know, environmental impact statements, they give you a little bit of indirect effects, but not all of them. And then the decision, decision makers say, well, um, option A is better than option B. Well, however, upon, oops, I shouldn't make that curve dip, yeah, that's wrong. Upon going to a level 8 or so, you actually, uh, you see that option B is better than A. So it's really important to get the whole supply chain um, incorporated in the, in the calculation. These are sort of crossovers. There's a whole paper on crossovers, and, uh, which, you, which you can use.